Hey everyone, Notorious here. Welcome back to my channel. In this episode, we're going to be talking about two different hitches. Two, two hitches that date back to almost the very beginning of hitch time. And they are the Valdetain and the French Prusik. So... Let's just get right into it. First, let's begin with the Valdetain. A lot of you might recognize the name from a very popular hitch called the Valdetain Tress. And in a moment, I'll explain where it got that name. So, to tie a Valdetain, if you're familiar with an auto block, which is a hitch that is tied with a sewn loop and it's a very simple hitch it's probably the most simple hitch that you can tie with a loop then this is just going to be very easy for you because it's exactly the same thing except it's tied with an eye to eye which is what this is it's called an eye to eye because it's got an eye on one end and an eye on the other end so you're going to take your eye to eye and you're going to go around at least six times. You can do less under certain circumstances if your friction, excuse me, if your friction management requires it. Um, but I like to go around as many times as I can. And then the next step is to take a carabiner and connect the eyes together like this and now you have created a valdetain okay um this will go up and down a rope and when you put your weight into it it'll lock up like that okay and just like an auto block this is a really simple hitch. What makes it, I'll explain in a second, but what makes it a Valdetain is it has to go around and then come out the other side and then the legs cannot cross, okay? If you cross the legs, then you get our next hitch, the front spot the French Prusik. And that is essentially the only difference between the two hitches. Um, this hitch here dates back to long, long time ago. Um, it's because it's so simple. Um, it was one of the earliest hitches on record. And the reason it is included in the name for the Valdetain Tress is because, you know, it has the coils up here. And I'm going to show you in a minute um, with the French Prusik how it, it also um, almost resembles a VT or a Valdetain Tress. So let's get right to the Val. Excuse me, the uh, French Prusik. Ooh, aggressive. Okay, so when you're tying a French Prusik, you t you start exactly as you would if you were tying a Valdetain. And you want to go around a minimum of seven times. Especially if you're using this with rigging. Uh, so we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I'm going to do eight. This is a longer cord. 
So here we've got effectively, not even effectively, literally, a Valdetain. But because this hitch cord is longer, watch what is, watch what is gonna happen. So I'm gonna move this up here a little bit and I'm going to now, I'm going to pull down on this and look what happens. The legs cross, okay? And this makes it a French Prusik. That is the defining feature, the legs cross. So this is um, a great hitch, just like the Valdetain, which is also great. Um, these are brainless, uh, mindless, easy, simple hitches to tie. And if you're ever in a situation where you need to, you know, act quickly and you need to create a hitch quickly, um, just don't even think about it. Just go right to this. It doesn't get any more simple than the Valdetain or the French Prusik. And just, just be cognizant of how many wraps you're doing or using rather, um, especially with the French Prusik. And the reason the French Prusik is a little less forgiving than the Valdetain is because it has this excess leg length here that allows, potentially allows the wraps to come loose especially if you're repeatedly, you know, cycling be between loading and unloading the hitch. So if you're repeatedly doing this, you know, it could, see, it could potentially slip like that. So you just want to make sure that you tend this really well. Um, it's not, it's not a good hitch for, you know, if you're like I just said, if you're gonna cycle between loading and unloading, you know, unweighting and weighting it, um, this is not a good hitch for that. It you need something that for for that type of climbing. Um, that's the, that's the reason why no one is in the trees using these, or on the rock wall, or um, whatever. The French Prusik is just, it, it has a proclivity for coming loose. Um, if you're using it for rigging purposes, you know, if you want to put a quick hitch together, that's fine. Just, you know, don't, don't cycle. Okay. Um, and if you do, just make sure you have someone minding the hitch constantly but there are so many other better options out there just in general not just because of the cycling issue but just in general i mean um the valdetain holds its weight it it's it's actually still to this day a good choice it's just um you know it's just not really that popular for the reasons that um, because a there are better hitches and um, you know it you can't it's really difficult to use a Valdetain with a rope wrench or any similar type of device um, it's also you know even though the auto block is really popular you know, with rock climbers and alpinists, 
they don't use eye to eyes really. I mean, some of them do for um, some of them keep a VT Prusik on them just as a backup for emergencies, uh, but they don't really overall. They don't really. That's not their go-to thing. They they use sewn loops for the most part. Um, so the eye to eye Prusik. So the Valdetain is just not popular for that reason. It's not because it's a bad hitch, it's just they're better options. And yeah. So but alright, I think I'm uh, I think I've covered everything here. I hope you have learned something. Um yeah. Don't forget to check my channel. I've got tons of short form and long form videos. Um, so shorts and you know longer videos under videos <laughs> um, But yeah, I've got all kinds of hitch how to's not tutorials and climbing videos check it out. I think you like it. Bye